Welcome back to Kingston. So I'm standing here on the, uh, the main Lakeshore Road in Kingston, Ontario, outside what was, for many years, the uh, principal penitentiary in the federal system. We're going to look inside and then we'll have a look around. Kingston is distinguished by the presence of no less than five federal correctional institutions. This is half the number that existed around the city just 25 years ago. This penitentiary was for over 100 years the most significant one, housing the most long-term or endangered prisoners and hosting a regional reception centre. Originally a provincial prison, Kingston Penitentiary's origins date back to May 1833, when the 21 acres of land within which it stands were purchased. The site was chosen, according to contemporary accounts, for its perfect salubrity, ready access to the water, and abundant quantities of fine limestone. The design was to be modelled on the state prison in Auburn, New York. The penitentiary opened on June the 1st, 1835. It would close, finally, 178 years later, in September 2013. The original walls were wooden and 12 feet high. An early visitor to the site, in 1842, was the author Charles Dickens, who wrote, understanding little of the actual brutality within the walls, that the penitentiary was an admirable jail well and wisely governed. Ten years after opening, in 1845, masonry walls, towers and the north gate we know today were added. And between 1859 and 1861, the prominent dome that survives to this day and the four cell blocks linked to it were constructed. The penitentiary has been the site of several riots. In 1932, Four days of riots ultimately produced prison reforms and generated momentum for a Royal Commission on the Canadian Penal System in 1938. A two-hour riot in 1954 included an escape attempt that failed and a serious riot in April 1971 saw five prison officers taken hostage and two prisoners killed. The army was finally called in to resolve the situation. Charles Dickens is not the only famous author to have visited the penitentiary. In 1923, Ernest Hemingway, then a young man reporting for the Toronto Daily Star, visited the prison to report a jailbreak. Amongst the most notorious inmates have been Paul Bernardo, a serial murderer and rapist in the late 80s and early 90s, and Wayne Bowden, chillingly known as the vampire rapist, who raped and killed four Montreal women between 1969 and 1971. More recently, the three members of the Shafia family, Father Mohammed, wife Tuba, and son Hamid, drowned three daughters and a second wife in Kingston in 2009 in an honour killing. When the penitentiary closed in 2013, permission was given for the United Way to conduct fundraising tours of the site, which have proved very popular, guided by former correctional officers. So let's have a look at the interior. This is the reception and waiting area for visitors, who can then go on to speak with inmates under significantly controlled conditions. Reflecting the major changes in the management of long-term prisoners, these premises could be used for conjugal visits. And not long before closure, the exercise yards, two of them, side by side, had been refurbished and expanded. The spiritual needs of Aboriginal or First Nation inmates were catered to with a special area. The interests of rehabilitation and providing constructive engagement included provision of extensive workshops from which products were manufactured. A library was accessible and it was possible too to request psychological counselling. But the bottom line is that accommodation was basic with a mix of one and two man cells and a special area for those considered to be, or to be at, high risk. 
The central dome's design was intended to provide coverage and supervision of all four wings from a central post. Protected escape routes for the guards led from that post should serious trouble arise. Overall, the design and features of the institution reflect the Victorian approach to incarceration and are now outdated. Nevertheless, the structures and some of the unique features of the penitentiary remain impressive. Externally, high walls and guard towers manned by armed officers made even the thought of escape unlikely. It will be interesting to see what eventually becomes of the site. Plans to create a sailing centre of excellence appear to be on hold, and for the time being, the fundraising tours will continue to be a local attraction. I'll close with a look at the site from the air. Thank you for taking the time to watch this short video. If the subject interested you, there's more information available from the links in the description below. If you enjoyed the presentation, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel for more in the same vein.